Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Rotel and the model number is RB03. In terms of general specifications, the amplifier in stereo mode can provide a continuous power output of 2 times 70 watts into 8 times speakers. Internally there are three links and if these are reconfigured then the amplifier can run in bridge mode and that provides a mono output with an 8 times speaker load, output power is 180 watts. If the, you then connect a 4 ohm speaker load, that will increase to 200 watts. And then frequency response is 10 hertz to 100 kilohertz. And total harmonic distortion is 0.03% over a frequency range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And then for the two inputs, sensitivity maximum is 1 volt and impedance is 33 kilo ohms. And then overall dimensions for width is 435 millimeters times by height 92 and then a depth of 334. And the weight of the amplifier is 7.5 kilograms. Now, I do like the design of this amplifier. It's very, very clean, but also as well, you have metal construction, which is really, really nice to see. And the audio quality is very, very good indeed. So what was the history behind this amplifier before it came into the workshop? Well, a gentleman called Leighton contacted me after he'd seen a number of repair videos on the channel. And what he advised was that the amplifier was working perfectly fine. And then what he noticed was just like a wisp of grey smoke that came from the top of the case. And then, the, of course, the amplifier went off. And on the email exchange, and also through conversation, he did some initial checks. So by removing the top cover and then applying the power, he was able to determine that the toroidal transformer got extremely warm very, very quickly. But there didn't appear to be any blown fuses. So I received the amplifier, and then, of course, you do the initial investigation. But before we get underway with regard to what the issue was, well, I just want to bring to your attention this photograph here, which shows, which is a very common thing on all amplifiers of this era, is a service plate. Now, the service plate has a usage, but commonly what you find is that when you're undertaking the repair of an amplifier, particularly if it's like a single board design like this one, that service plate doesn't give you full access to the entire circuit board, and that's an issue. Now, just remember, if you're going to disassemble this amplifier, you've got four fixing screws that go through each of the heat sinks, and then you then have a single grounding screw which goes through and then connects to a grounding terminal on the main board. Now, what is nice with this amplifier, and when you look at the service manual, you've got this wiring diagram, and it's very, very clean layout. And if we sort of just look at what we're seeing here. So on the left-hand side, what they've done is they've just took the toroidal transformer, and what you can see is that it provides a secondary output and then it's showing you the main power switch and that of course provides the power to the primary of the transformer but there is also another circuit board now the purpose of this circuit board is that the amplifier has an individual module which we'll come to later in the video which is used for the trigger input and this power supply is used to provide power then to the trigger input and i'll get into the details and what that operation is a little bit later so during initial inspection, and what I'm highlighting here, what we're showing is that this is one of the 8 amp bridge rectifiers. And there are two, one for the left channel and then one for the right channel. And what you can see is that the package has cracked open. And this is the result of excess heat. And normally when this occurs, it means that there has been an internal short circuit within the bridge rectifier. Hence the smoke that Leighton was seeing. Now, in turn, of course, what that would present to the toroidal transformer was a short circuit, and that would be resulting in excess current draw, so hence why the transformer was getting extremely warm. But although the bridge rectifier was removed from circuit, we still have to make a number of tests. We don't just remove it and then put a brand new bridge rectifier in there. So the first thing that you would need to look at is you can see these small brown ceramic disc capacitors, and there are four of them. And the purpose of those capacitors is to act as a high frequency filter. So after rectification and then smoothing, any high frequency noise will be effectively eliminated by these 100 nanofarad ceramic disc capacitors. And it's not uncommon on many amplifiers because they use the same type of design. Sometimes these capacitors to go short circuit, so it's not actually the bridge rectifier or the diodes that fail. It's just the capacitor because it's across the associated terminals. Didn't find any issue with the ceramic disc capacitors. And then what I was able to do was to power up the amplifier. And what I'm looking to do is to monitor two things. The first one is I want to see if the toroidal transformer has not been damaged due to the excess current draw. 
and then I'm also verifying that I've got the correct voltages on the secondary side of the transformer and we did so there wasn't a requirement here that you would have to try and source a replacement toroidal but because the transformer secondary is only providing two voltage outputs it's not a complicated transformer so if you couldn't source one directly from Rotel then a generic transformer could have been sourced now what you can see towards the rear are the large smoothing capacitors and these are branded as Rotel and probably not so clear on this photograph brown glue around each one of those smoothing capacitors and we know from many of the tutorials that that brown glue needs to be removed because it goes conductive and it also goes corrosive so the task here was to remove the back panel and then as I said you've got the four fixing screws for the heat sink that you need to remove and then also there's a center fixing screw that goes through onto the ground point and you can just about make it out on this photograph it sits center to the large electrolytic capacitors so once they were removed and what you can see here is the two bridge rectifiers are out of circuit now but you can see the ceramic disc capacitors and what I've done is I've took a plastic scraping tool and I've removed all of that glue and that metal screw tab that you see right in the center that's the grounding screw that goes through to the chassis and then what you can see as well are the protection fuses left and right now this amplifier doesn't have a speaker protection system which uses a relay but you do have a relay which is mounted on the smaller power supply associated then with the trigger inputs and trigger outputs the other thing to consider if we focus on this shot what you can see are the fuse holders now because this amplifier is probably 15 years old plus what you can find is that the oxidization will be around the fuse carriers so it's good practice to remove them the fuses that is and then clean them up in this case there wasn't any issue with the fuse carriers but if they were heavily oxidized then it would be prudent to replace them the fuse value of course would be written on the end of the fuses but there's also a label or a sticker here which tells you that these are time delay fuses 3.15 amp and there's two of them so two for each channel the other thing to consider are the dry solder joints on the circuit board now Rotel is unlike Marantz Marantz you're going to be extremely busy resoldering connections here with the Rotel amplifiers you don't tend to see a lot of dry joints you'll get some discoloration on some of the power components but because the amplifier is being fully recapped and then also serviced as well it's of course logical just to verify where you have the power components just scan across the board and then just reflow any of those connections and then here what you can see these are the branded Rotel electrolytic capacitors and you can just sort of make out the brown glue just around the bottom area now when these were removed if you sort of gave them a shake they rattled so it told you already that the capacitors had pretty much dried out and then when you put the ESR meter on there what you found was that the equivalent series resistance had increased and also the 8200 microfarad value of each capacitor had fallen to approximately half and remember that these electrolytic capacitors do a huge amount of work in terms of providing the necessary current and then here what you can see is the brand new electrolytic capacitors have been fitted and you can also see that there are two 8 amp bridge rectifiers in there as well so these are Nikicon capacitors and then you've also got a series of smaller electrolytic capacitors as well and what I've done in the description of the video is I've just listed them out for anyone who has interest in that and maybe they were looking to recap and then here we take a higher level shot you can see the left and the right hand side you can see the driver transistors for each stage and then also the audio output transistors and then what I've done is I've just put a couple of circles if you can make them out just around two of the links which are visible there's also a third link now this is where you would reconfigure the amplifier to run as a mono block and the reference numbers on the board it refers to S601, 602 and 603 but remember that you wouldn't reconfigure the amplifier for mono block if it was powered you need to depower the amplifier set your links reapply the power then and you can also see on this shot that the board has been thoroughly cleaned as well because there was you know dust which is coating the circuit board but that's perfectly normal it just goes through the ventilation grills on the case and then here what we're focusing on is this is the trigger board so the purpose of the trigger board is you have a switch and then if it's switched to on and you apply the 12 volt trigger voltage what will happen is it has the ability then to turn the amplifier on and off 
but do remember that the on off button on the front fascia will override this trigger board and then you have two sockets with a 3.5 millimeter jack and the purpose of that is one receives the trigger input and it also provides a trigger output as well and if you had additional devices which could receive a trigger signal then you can common them up so a single trigger would then switch on multiple devices and then here what you can see this is this smaller circuit and this is for the trigger board and just to the right hand side you can see that there is a small relay and that is a 12 volt single pole and i've put the part number in the description for the video now it may well be that later never use the trigger input but because of the amplifier age it's just prudent just to replace that relay and then here what i've done is i've just shown you the underneath of the power supply for the trigger board and common practice is just to verify that all the solder joints are good there was a few which were slightly discolored but again took the opportunity then just to make good and then you also once that boards up you can remove any dust and make sure that all of the casing internally is clean and then once that was done and the amplifier was then powered up and this is uh, reconfigured just for the alignment part just for stereo mode is to make the adjustment and what i'm showing here is an extract from the service manual and it's showing you the left channel so on the left hand side it refers to the line input and then you have the input side of the amplifier and then here you have a preset marked as vr601 and what you're looking to do is to measure across test point one so again don't sort of use your multimeter probe leads and just try and press them onto the pins just make some hookup clips and then you leave the amplifier normally running for about 20 minutes and then what you can then do is to make the adjustment and then of course this is just the flow of current through the emitter resistors and in turn then you're measuring the voltage drop across them and you need to align that then to four millivolts and remember that you're going to do this both for the left and then for the right hand channel as well it's also a good practice just to check the dc offset on the rear of the amplifier there isn't a separate dc offset adjustment and if the dc offset was excessively high here it was just a few millivolts remember that you're not looking for an issue in the output stage or the driver stage of the amplifier you've got to come to the very very early part stage here as shown those are those smaller signal transistors and they're referred to as long tail pairs now normally when the amplifier is manufactured and this applies to all amplifiers that use this type of design what you can find is that the gain of the transistors is pretty much equally matched but over time you can find that that will change and then that results in this dc offset being passed through the circuit of the amplifier so no point looking at the output transistors you've got to go right to the beginning and then just do a block change out and as we always say just ensure that you source the components from a reputable supplier and then what i'm showing you here are the hook clips that i referred to and the dc measurement on the multimeter you can see is at 2.50 millivolts so a little bit low and again after adjustment you're able to bring that then to four millivolts as you see here so not difficult at all and what you find on this rotel amplifier the trimmers quite easy to adjust they're not twitchy at all and it's very easy to get it to four millivolts you're always going to have some degree of tolerance but you know i didn't find any issue here getting it bang on four millivolts and then here on the next channel so this is the right if you were looking from the front you can see it's a little bit higher than the left channel but it's still not at four millivolts coming in at 3.33 millivolts and here just to make the adjustment so you just 3.99 millivolts and then really the last part is put the amplifier onto test mode so this amplifier will run for approximately three to four hours and the sound quality is, is excellent it really is and you can see the construction of this amplifier it's really really good and an absolute joy to work on as well and to be able to restore this for later and then for this to go back and form part of his system and what i understand is that he has three other of these identical amplifiers which he will be sending and then he also has the rotel pre-amplifier as well so once that is all done these amplifiers will deliver a lot of listening pleasure for many many years so that sort of brings us to the end of this tutorial and as always i thank you for stopping by and if you need any help guidance or assistance by all means, email audio amplifier servicing at AOR.com and I'll be more than happy to come back to you and provide any guidance or support that you may require. So until the next time, I wish you all the very best. Cheers and bye bye.